Well, welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas and I'm your host today. And today we are in the ladies room. And you know, the ladies room is that place where women talk about things that we might not just say anywhere, the things that we can only say to one another because, well, because we have had some shared experiences along the way. And this is our opportunity to talk about it Maybe we'll vent some frustrations, maybe we'll give advice to one another, and we'll come away with some new ideas, or maybe just feeling a whole lot better because we did some bitching and moaning and, and got some <laughs> validation for the way we feel. So we like to say that in the ladies' room, we go there. Now, our session today is going to last for about an hour, and if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our panelists and the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. This is not an interview. This is a free-form chat discussion thing that's going. But, but if there is something that you'd like to say that you don't want to say out loud, you can put it in the chat to me and I will share it for you. So our topic today in the ladies room is, is it time to go full out Marie Kondo on your life? And I'm really excited to introduce uh, my special guests today. Let me tell you just a little bit about them. And so as I introduce you guys, just wave your hands and say, hey, that's me, hello. So first of all, I've got LaVon Shields of Management Consultants of America, where they provide accounting and tax services for small businesses, entrepreneurs, and nonprofits. So LaVon, give everybody a wave. Hello. We have Christina Fight. She is the Marketing Solutions Manager with KWSM, a digital marketing agency. So wave your hand, Christina. We have Ganilla DeSanto who is a co-owner and creative director at s &G Studios, Inc. You can wave your hand, Ganilla. And finally, we have Donna Netwig, who is a business and growth strategist at the Netwig Company. So ladies, so happy to have you here as we go through our conversation today. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about you. We'll certainly learn more about what what your thoughts are on this particular topic and why uh, why, you know, maybe you are ready to just go full out Marie Kondo on everything. And, and I'll tell you, when I, when I first thought of this topic, I was reading a, uh, an article about her, a review of her book or something, and they were talking about her, her um, kind of ruthless strategy, you know, for, um, for cleaning out, clearing out, and so forth. And I, I started thinking, man, right now at this crazy time we need some pretty ruthless strategies about reassessing our priorities and why are we doing the things we're doing and why was that ever a priority to me anyway because it means absolutely nothing to me now so i thought well let's just throw some of my my best friends in the ladies room and let's let's talk about it so you guys it's open what did it mean to you or what does this concept mean to you, especially right now at this crazy lockdown time? Well, I'm, I'm happy to start. Um, I mean, there is the, there, there are the two extremes, right? Um, it's, which I talk about a lot is the cluttered house is cluttered mind, right? It, you, you're just like overwhelmed with all the stuff that you have. In me, and that's where the physical level kind of starts like at home. And now that we're spending so much time at home, and we're working from home and we have the kids at home and they go, you know, they're, they're having online. Well, not now, but they had virtual learning and all this kind of stuff. And, and all of a sudden, a lot of people started noticing like, oh my gosh, my garage, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That said, Marie Kondo is all about, you know, minimalist, like literally like the, the, just the pure bare necessities of what you need. So they're kind of like two extremes. Um, is it time to go Marie Kondo, like full on out? I, I don't know about that, but I do think that there is a, this is a great opportunity to kind of clean out your life and not just your home, but mm. um, because letting go of physical things also helps you let go of an emotional baggage. So, um, you know, to, to organize and to definitely get rid of that stuff that you haven't used in a year or years is, is a good way to start because there it's, it's a, it's a cathartic experience to also like either sell it, throw it out, give it away or, or, you know, just 
plain old throw it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We were yeah. talking before uh, we started the show about um, moving, you know, and how, oh my gosh, you know, if, if you've lived in a place for a very, very, very long time, how difficult that is to move. And Donna and I were sharing that um, my husband and I moved at one point in our lives, we moved seven times in 10 years. And so we got really good at it. It was like, <laughs> you haven't used it, bam, it's out of here, you know, or um, the whole idea of, does this bring me joy? Well, evidently not because it's still in the box, you know, so <laughs> we just get rid of that. And to where it's, uh, it's kind of become, I don't know, second nature for us now where we're actually thinking about, no, I don't really want to, I don't want to buy that, even though I think we want it, but I don't really think we want that. And are we going to really use it or um, why do we have to have that? So, yeah, I mean, two years ago, I, I literally went through that. We, we had owned a house for 16 years and we were selling it and moving. And um, I'm usually very organized and, 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 and also get rid of things. And it's like, oh, are you kidding me? I haven't used this in years. But I literally went through that. This was back east where we have basements and attics. Yeah. And I literally found stuff that I'm like, oh, this is where this went to die. Yeah. In my <laughs> attic or my basement. I'm like, and, and sometimes I'll be like, oh, my God, I don't even remember this. <laughs> so... Even for somebody who, who me who prides herself on being organized and getting rid of stuff, you know, on a regular basis, it was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I only moved five times in the last 10 years, <laughs> but the 10 years prior to that, I moved several times too. And it does come in layers and, and the virus is really the first month after getting over the shock of it. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity for a deep redesign, personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. And so that you don't have to do it in layers, that you, if you really take the time to evaluate your values, you know, what is important to me now? Who do I want to be now? What have I learned from this? Because this state of suspension is a great opportunity for us to learn about ourselves. And we certainly do try to avoid that. So um, there, there is nothing but at this point, but to look at creative opportunities, business and professionally. That's a great term, state of suspension. Yeah. Yeah. We're all kind of holding our breath. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I work with my clients, when I would go in and organize and create their whole accounting department on site, one of the first things I would do is, is that go through all of their drawers of just ridiculously worthless documents and papers or whatever and get them all organized because paper overwhelms me. It, it, it gives me a sense of anxiety. So I'm like practically 100% paperless. So when I go in, I would just like get everything organized and go, okay, so do you even know what this is? If I can't figure out what it is and I'm the one looking at your numbers and it needs to go. It needs to go, it needs to go, it needs to go. Let's just shred it, burn it, whatever we got to do. Because you're, I mean, when you when you have all that organized, you can breathe. You can see the forest for the trees. You can figure out what's going on. Yeah. And when you've got little pockets of stuff where you go, okay, in that pile, for, you know, just a quarter of the way down is where this document is going to be, and in that pile towards the bottom is where this document is going to be. That's just that's a lot of a lot of mental energy that you're using up. That then you forget your kids' names and stuff like that. And that's that's never positive. <laughs> Yeah, well, talk about a priority, though, you know, is, is uh, what, remembering your kid's name should be a priority over knowing how far down in that pile is that piece hey. of paper. <laughs> what do we think? I think that this, you know, for me, having my desk space was always something that I needed to keep clear. And every morning, if I had left a piece of paper, sticky notes or something where I'd taken some quick notes, I had to clear that up either at the very end of the day or the beginning of the day. And we, we've been in a habit at home, especially now that we're spending more time at home, but we've been in a habit at home, maybe a couple of times a year, we'd clean out stuff and uh, even go through things like the medicine cabinet and look at the expiration date and realize, oh, we've got two years of medicine in here that's been expired for a long time. Um, you know, taking one room at a time. And now that we've been living and working together in this space and just coexisting so much, 
you see things that you ha I haven't seen before of, wow, stuff really piles up over there. Or, <laughs> wow, I tend to come in and, and put stuff in one area and that feels really organized. But over here, this drawer is, is just still a mess and I, I haven't paid attention to it. So it seems like the more time we've spent in our home, the more that I see things that we just don't use, that just don't ever even get looked at or opened. And it makes me feel like, okay, now's the time to get rid of that. Now's the time to go through that we've lived in it and not used it. Because sometimes if you're busy and you're coming in and out, you think, well, on the weekend or maybe the summertime, I'll use that. If you're in your house months at a time now and you haven't used something, it's probably time for it to go. So it's been a good measure of where we thought something might have value occasionally. And so we kept it. Now we realize, wow, we really do never use this thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're in your house every day and you have 15 coffee cups <laughs> and you only use four, <laughs> you should get rid of the rest of the coffee cups. It was, so, it was so one of those realizations, like why do we have so many coffee cups? <laughs> we use the same four all the time. We should just get rid of the rest of them and how much space that would free up. Um, right. So things like that, you don't realize that you've got a lot of stuff stored up in, in a place because you're only visiting it, you know, in and out in a rush. But when you're living there every day and using the same thing, you realize you don't really need a lot of options for stuff. Mm. How, how many of you have 50,000 coffee cups? You know? <laughs> Way more than I need, but <laughs> I have four. <laughs> more than I, I have more than I need, but not that many. <laughs> so in our house, is, we don't drink coffee in my house. So the fact oh. that we have this many coffee oh. cups and no one drinks coffee <laughs> is like ridiculous. We, well, I'm well, the only one that does. I, I drink coffee, but I grew up, my parents had a coffee pot going the whole time. So I can't imagine living without oh. coffee. But when we moved this last time, um, I had two girlfriends helping me and they decided I had too many coffee mugs and so they said you can have this many and these are going to I was like it was like withdrawal no I can't do that so some of them I, I did just get rid of them but there's a few that I have in our travel trailer and uh, we came home from camping a couple weeks ago and I had I brought a cup in to wash you know I brought all the dishes in to wash because we were dry camping and I was so stressed about making sure that coffee cup did not go in my cabinet <laughs> so they wouldn't see it in there and know that I had one more in there that was silly. I love it. Mean, now you see oh. so many examples like um, going on walks and stuff. I, I People's garages it, that uh, look like yes. an organized hoarder's house. I mean, like <laughs> seriously, like paths that are like this thing. You, know, you have to walk sideways to get between whatever bins and all of a sudden these but people they know are in each of those things like no that over there is just where that is like the thing you haven't seen in 15 years that's where that's where that is okay good, good exactly <laughs> and i'm finally seeing people like oh you know what maybe we should start cleaning this out and i it, and i just i i mean you know I, like i said there's the there are the two extremes right the super yeah. minimalist that doesn't even want to have a vase on a table yeah or uh, you know, one chair in a room and, and maybe a, a love seat and like a coffee table and, and that's it mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, I grew up in a culture where, where everything was white. The walls were white. The ev ev furniture was white. Everything was just, it was like a hospital room. And, I, and, and to me, that's the other extreme of, you know, not, it doesn't feel like home and all that kind of stuff. But then, mm -hmm. you know, it, I think there is a happy medium. Some people are literally wired for minimalism. Mm -hmm. They love it, they couldn't live any other way. But I, I do think that most people probably fall somewhere, you know, in the, in the middle yeah. of the pendulum. Yeah. Yeah. What I noticed is I did, because I don't, Marie Kondo, I know generally speaking on a marketing level what she does, but I, I just did check in a little bit on, on a video of hers or something. And she's not a minimalist and she's, mm -hmm. but she, really wants to get all the clutter out of your home and so that you can live more in the moment. But she also, I was with Christina, that's why she says don't go room by room, go by get all of your silverware out and sort that. Get you know all of your paperwork out and sort through that. Go by right. categories rather than room. Because if you go by room, you're always gonna be chasing it. Right. Oh my and, and then yeah. she's very much into 
what you keep is being able to say, what brings me joy? And I think this whole time of the virus right now, for business and personally, we have to figure out who we are, what brings us joy, not just change our businesses because now everything's going online or because this is a little opportunity that might happen. But what is really, how can you be innovative in this time? Take the time, don't be in the rush. We always are in this culture in such a ridiculous rush to make a decision. And maybe we, we'd be better off looking at what she says, what brings us joy? What, you know, what are our strengths? What do we wanna do? How can we do it differently just because everybody else is jumping online? How can we not do that or do that in a different way so that we're just not following the herd all the time? Yeah, I mean, it's a question of, of, of pausing literally, right? To, yeah. to, to, take, to take the pause that we have been, for, for, that has been forced upon us to say, wait a minute, is this really what I'm meant to do? Like it's, for a lot of people, it's been like, I've been in this, this, this literally J-O-B to just make money and it's just, I'm just miserable and they may have been laid off or they're still working and then saying, you know what? I can't go on doing this. I need to do something that, to your point, Donna, that brings me joy, that makes me feel fulfilled, that makes me feel like I'm contributing to the world in a positive way. If you use the pause to your advantage, if you can, I mean, there's also that survival level where you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. But if we are forced into this pause, so let's use it mm -hmm. and get more introspective. We don't like to do that. It's not comfortable, but that's where we need to be right now. I think that's the healthiest gift we can give ourselves right now. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, the I what, what brings me joy was actually the part I... I had the most negative reaction to. Uh, there are, I think there's things that bring us peace. There's things that maybe just serve a functional purpose. They make a decision-making process easy. But I think we tend to consume based on what brings us joy. And I think Marie Kondo's website is a big factor in that. I mean, she, more than information on her site, she sells products. Mm -hmm. And those things are beautiful. I look at them and I think, oh, what if I had that in my space? I'd feel so joyful. Mm -hmm. But I, I disagree that joy should drive all purposes because it, 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 I think the sense of joy that she talks about or that is a common understanding, there is joy in doing a job that isn't always great because I know it provides for my family. That's a different kind right. of joy. That's a different kind of peace. And I think that there, there was a piece of that that I felt like that didn't really resonate with me on, I don't choose some of the things in my life because they're joyful. I choose them because they're functional and they make a decision easier um, or because it creates a little less, um, I don't know what the word is. It's not joy, but it, it creates more avoid pain. Instead yeah, avoid, avoid pain. But I think that sometimes when we buy, I, I have avoided at times in the past going into, let's say, my closet or going into my desktop stuff because I actually feel shame over the things I bought over joy. Mm. I bought but, this know, and I claimed, oh, this is going to, this, I love happy. this. It makes me happy. Yeah. It's so funky. And I wore it once because I didn't really have anywhere to wear it. And I get then that sense of shame about, wow, I spent money on this and it didn't really serve a good purpose. I felt a lot of joy around it, but it wasn't functional. And so there's shame there. For in my interpretation, that's not joy. That's the consumerism we have been marketed with. And it's a high that we get. You know, we get this uh, excitement, but excitement is not joy. To me, joy is really heart-centered it fills me in some way and it you know that fulfillment is doing that job just like you said so it's a distinction on how you define it because consumerism to me does bring no joy at all um mm -hmm. and i don't it's you know i just don't define it that way oh sorry okay i was just uh, wanted to add to what donna said to you you know joy for me is it's not circumstantial it actually is a, a feeling an inner peace that regardless mm -hmm. of what you're 
going on. And there's this joy, you know, joy yeah. and peace that you you carry around with you, or you you almost kind of develop in your lifestyle. Mm. And I think some of what uh, Sir Christina was explaining was just having fun. And I enjoy shopping. <laughs> and I, 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 who does right? And you know, I go into a store and I see something that really looks cute, and I go, "Oh, this is so darling!" And then I shop and I buy. It. And one of the things that I have recognized in this time that's been down because I realized where I was spending quite a bit of my time was on the road, so to speak, because my gas bill for my car is diminished compared to what I spend on gas. Mm -hmm. right. That tells me I was driving a lot. And I know I was going out, whether to restaurants or the stores, mostly maybe to stores or just what, visiting friends. However, I recognize that quite a bit of my time may be spent in the stores. And I look at my closet and go, oh my God, when did I buy all this stuff? Why do I have all this stuff? And so it's, this has been a really great opportunity because I've lived in my home for 34 years. 91. Wow. Let me, 1984, do the math, 30 something years, right? <laughs> When I heard you ladies talk about moving five times in 10 years, I go, oh my oh. God, <laughs> <laughs> <From> 1984. <laughs> and so it is a challenge for me in the sense, I live alone, but it's a, it is, it is a challenge and I'm not a really clutter person, but I do have a lot, a lot of stuff that I really don't need. I'm really recognizing those coffee cups and other things that we have that we really, it's really about really what is of value to us, what can we use? What can we give away? It's like cathartic for me now. This is, and not only with things, I think this, this is for me a cathartic time. And it could be for you ladies to, to reflect on your own life. Yeah. And you know yeah. what is important, ladies? I want to share something with you. It's amazing. But these are the times that you get to know who your friends are. Who calls you? Who sends you a note? Who, who just speaks before, who just sends you an email, who texts you. There are people in your life that you may not have heard from. You know, I did something last week that just came to me. I went through a drawer I have with lots of cards, little cards, you know, miss you, the whatever. And I sent out 10 cards, some of my very close friends. And it's about being, about friendship. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I just took time out to do that because I felt I needed to do, reach out beyond what I do by phone or whatever. And I got three phone calls today of the 10 people I sent that received the cards. And it brought tears to my friends. I just said, you know, Liz, the words just touched me. I needed this today. Brilliant. So I think it's good because we can actually use this opportunity. Yeah. And look at our lives and who are our friends. Because some of the folks that you think are your friends are not really your friends. And some of the friends that you think you have, you may have to kind of weed out because you're spending time reflecting on who they truly are. Mm -hmm. I just want yeah. to show you. Yeah. 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 I, I totally agree. I, you know, what I have found in my life is that times of, of great upheaval, whether it's uh, you've lost your job, you know, you've gone through a divorce, uh, somebody that you love gets sick, you know, things like that happen. And it has a way of really centering you in on what's important and, and thinking about where you've been spending so much of your time and so much of your effort and, um, and, and why was I doing that? Why was that important? What has it, what has it not just gotten you but what was the purpose of it has did it ever serve any greater good even you know and um i was thinking the other day about somebody um and i you know i believe if somebody comes to your mind you should reach out to them and just say hello hey i was thinking about you or whatever but somebody came to my mind who i truly have not seen and or talked to in probably 15 years and it struck me um I wonder if that person even remembers me. I wonder if they even, do I ever cross their mind, you know, and, and am I losing energy now about this person that I am not even on their radar anywhere? So I, I don't know about you guys, but it, it's just, especially right now in this time of lockdown, you know, I'm, I'm giving myself a lot of permission to, you know, 
cut some of those ties, strengthen other ties. Um, you know. How about you guys? Well, I just want to respond to like Christina because when she was talking about she looks in her closet and feels shame. I'm so there with you. And it's like, I think we, and I have gone through layers and layers of getting rid of stuff. And it's like, what, so where my head is, is like, why do we believe what we believe? Why do, why did we believe we needed those things? Because That's where we cute. need to go dig really deeply. What, what are our beliefs? Are, are because people are yelling at us, marketing yeah. at us all the time and all of that. And what are our real beliefs? What really is important? What yeah, are the yeah. real needs that really bring us that heart-centered feeling of, of gratitude to be able to work and provide income for our families and, um, you know, have continuous learning and all the things that are really important rather than, I mean, I always forget. I mean, remember after 9-11 and I remember feeling so insulted when the first words out of the president's mouth was go out and buy stuff. Is that who we are? And it's so reductive to our culture. And this is to me an opportunity to really figure out what our beliefs are and not what people tell us to believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before what? my second child, I had, um, I, I went through, several phases where I would look at, well, oh, I'm going to be going to this new place and I need this mm -hmm. new outfit because I need to make sure I have the right appearance there. Or, oh, I'd really mm -hmm. love the way this, the minimalist movement actually kind of came through, but it was about the, the style of something. And so I had, you know, oh, I can put knickknacks back out. I want to put this out. I want to collect that. And my husband is about two times, three times as bad as I am. It, it hit us both very mm -hmm. similar times where it took us being on the same page where now we don't shop the way we used to shop. Mm -hmm. We don't replace things that aren't broken, um, yeah. or, you know, that are just a little beat up. We reuse and find new ways to use stuff. We do exchanges with neighbors and friends of stuff that yes. we don't need anymore. Um, we live very differently and, and consume very differently than we used to. And we look at repurposing things and looking at the value that they hold. So we went through a lot of this transition in, in the stuff that we do, but more and more now it's the, the thinking of, of the how we believe. And belief. like you guys have mentioned, the people in your lives, the, the processes in which you work. I mean, we waste a lot of times so much time in the things that we do in a day. That, that really don't matter. Um, mm -hmm. So being more, in, I like the, the word of being more intentional in the things that you're doing mm -hmm. um, and letting go of the things that other people expect you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, though all of those things have been big eye openers the last couple of years. Um, and we had yeah. another business and we lost it as part of this transition that we've gone through. And honestly, it's sort of a relief. Um, in fact, you wouldn't find a trace of it in our house. That's how fast we got rid of it. <laughs> everything that all the collateral and the cards and the business cards and the brochures mm -hmm. and email everything it was well this is done there's nothing we need to hold on to anymore and to fully release it from ourselves we had to let go of it so right. I do really believe that purging stuff and getting rid of clutter and changing processes does have a very cleansing feel. And I think it, out of all of this stuff from Marie, the, the th like I said, the hardest thing I had was just the, the term of joy and just some things just have purpose without joy. They just solve a, 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 a functional yeah. need. And I love <laughs> form and function. I love that things are sometimes just functional and I may not really get joy out of it. It might be a little beat up, but just that it gives me peace in its functionality. It gives me peace in its purpose. So I think it was that term joy that I sh struggled with. And it's honestly, for me, been a term that I find used in so many other ways that for me, I, I just had to redefine what does that actually mean when I'm evaluating the stuff, the people, the, the thinking in my life that I want to get rid of. Yeah. Well, another thing that I think also is um, it, it, it has, ha has happened to a lot of people is things that we, again, you know, things that we thought were important before this, we now realize are not important. Things that we didn't think were important are now all of a sudden very dear to us and really important. Mm -hmm. But the same thing to talk to, to go back to what Liz was saying and Patty was asking about, um, you know, kind of cleaning out 
stuff in your life that is not working or, or relationships that aren't work, not working. But I also find in, in trying times that not only the people that you think who are you, you think are your friends are really not your friends. The people that you don't think they're just like, Oh, you know, um, um, like good time, Charlie or, or fair weather friend or wherever are the ones that actually show up and are really, mm -hmm. really, truly friends and, and stand, you know, and stand by you and, mm -hmm. and reach out and, Hey, how you doing? Are you all right? What's going on? And just, again, to the point of if somebody, if somebody is on your heart, then it's, it, you're supposed to reach out to them, whether it's a text, whether it's a phone call, yep. whether it's an email, whether it's a card it, or flowers or, or just, I mean, granted, you can't really drive to their house anymore, at least not right now. But, but you know, just to really follow up on that and be, be faithful to that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I did something really bold last Friday um, with my 21-year-old daughter. We are redoing a lot of the rooms in our home. And one of them is the living room, which... Um, I have a lot of stuff in there that needed to be purged. So my daughter kind of used the, you know, the Marie Kondo effect where she said, mom, does this give you joy? And she was literally pulling things out of my hand. No, you need to get rid of that. And, you know, just, so what we did on Saturday was we had a garage sale, but everything was free. So I had some beautiful paintings, couches, I mean, just a lot of different things. And I thought, okay, is anybody really going to come, be, you know, because it's COVID-19 times. I had a lot of my neighbors that came over and they said, are you really giving this stuff away for free? And they wanted to pay for it. And I said, no, this is our way of giving back and we've already enjoyed it. And, but the relief of walking down to my living room now, it's like, oh, it feels so good. And it does give me joy. And, but I don't miss really the things that, you know, that I did get rid of. Some of them were, you know, somewhat sentimental, uh, but most of it was things that, you know, that maybe were a gift many years ago or, you know, pillows that, you know, we maybe just a few years old and people still took those things because I, when they took them, I kind of said, okay, well, here's what you might want to do, you know, try putting them in the dryer, you know, with the a fabric softener, you know, just making them feel comfortable that they're taking something that, you know, maybe somebody else wouldn't want to buy, you know? Mm -hmm. I have to make a pitch for something if people are releasing things and purging things. Um, there is, if you're in the LA area, I'm such a true believer and they take nice product, you know, like artwork and accessories and things that, you know, are, are not stained or anything. And it's a mm -hmm. sense of home. And when I got rid of my last layer of things um, about six months ago, I gave them a ton of stuff. They create homes and they have designers help design the homes for kids that have aged out of foster care. Oh. So many, many times okay. they're actually, I'm interviewing the founder Monday. Um, many, many times um, these people are just, these kids are just thrown out of the system and they might have an apartment and now they're sleeping on the floor. And um, it's, I think it's so important because we live up to our environment. If we have our, we develop self-respect by being in a healthy environment and it, it, it changes people's lives. So if anybody's purging anything and you're in the LA area and she wants to go national, I would highly recommend donating your things to them. That's What's awesome. the name of the entity? How do you do that? Hmm? What's the name of the entity? How do it's you... a sense of home. A sense of home, okay. That's their, yeah, yeah. And then all you have to do is send photos um, because as we release and as we reorganize our lives and our minds, why not share and, and change other people's lives? Mm -hmm. And it does, it truly mm -hmm. does. They're local, did you say? Are they mm -hmm. in LA? Are they in LA? Are they local? Yeah, LA, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. That's great. Thanks a lot. That, that's good. You know, I, I was um, feeling all this pressure about, since we have all this free time, you ought to be doing something. Like you should take up a hobby or you should be mm -hmm. cleaning out your garage or you should be doing something or other. And, and I kept seeing all these people getting puzzles and all of that. And 
And, uh, and I was like, I don't want a puzzle laying around. I, so instead I, I decided, uh, I bought a, a kit, a model kit of a little miniature house. It was a little miniature greenhouse oh. and it was so darling. I mean, the, the box was so cute and like, if it was all put together and completed, it would be like, you know, maybe this big. And But it had lights and it had, every, it was so cute. So I bought that and I thought, well, I'm going to work on that during this downtime. It was ridiculous. It was like, you had to build everything inside. <laughs> you had to build every little piece of furniture. You had to, if there was a, a potted plant, you had to make the pot. You had to make the plant. You had to, I mean, it was ridiculous. It, it was so tiny. I had glue all over my hands and it was all over my dining room table. And I stuck out it for like four weeks, just this mess on my dining room table. And I would sit down and it stopped being fun. It started being, <laughs> I've got to work on this thing now. And the final straw was when I had to build a planter box, you know, that was like, three quarters of an inch long. And so you have to cut it and bend it and glue it. And then I had to make each individual plant that was in it. And I, I think the F word was involved. And I said, <laughs> more than once. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really said, I don't have to do this. Where is this pressure to create and be wonderful, you know, during this lockdown. And so, it was the most freeing thing in the world to pick up all those freaking little pieces, stick them in a box, and I put them on, on top of my closet just in case the guilt won out, you know, or something. <laughs> but I put it up there and I was like, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. I'm an adult. I don't have to do this. <laughs> You know, Patty, you you make me think of something that when we when you first sent me this topic that it made me think of it uh, as well. Um, you know, a lot of times we get good at finding a place for things, whether it's somebody asking us to do something for them, to join in something, to show up somewhere, to participate in some way, or to you know support in some way, whether it's something physical or just being there. And that we have, we have good ways of we keep adding and just figuring out, okay, where do I shove this in my calendar or my house or in my list of friends or list of acquaintances? How do I keep saying yes to these things? And when you first sent me this topic, I thought, oh, this is like the say no topic. This is, this is when you, you get in that habit of saying no and how good it feels to have the space when you say no to people who aren't serving you situations where maybe you really don't want to go to a place, you don't want to be committed to a certain event or a certain function um, or a certain cause because you really don't believe in it and, and just freeing that space for other opportunity. And now I think about in physical stuff when I am thinking about, oh, I like something or I might want to buy something, especially if it's an organizing thing because I like organizing, buying organizer stuff. Um, I always think now about, well, if I say no to this, where, what, what else will happen where there won't be trash in a year from this, or it won't end up in a landfill somewhere, or I won't be donating, or I won't have to sell it somewhere. I feel like saying no to a lot of stuff eliminates one of the things that I have a big concern of is trash down the road. And mm. that guilt of when we're purging sure. stuff and you see how much trash there is. And I'm a big environmentalist seeing where does all this stuff go? And right. so I, it's kind of ingrained in my head in these processes when I was thinking about this was the, the idea of we're told as, as women that we need to say no more to preserve our own space and to preserve our own ideals and our own time and that self-care. And I feel like this is the very tangible saying no to things that don't serve you. Yeah. Um, and I really love that idea. I've gotten a lot better at it and wasn't always so good at it. Um, and I still slip and fall on it. I'll say yes to something. And then later on that day, I'll be like, oh, why did I say yes? I, I, I didn't really want to do that. Um, so yeah, getting better at saying no to the things that don't really create meaning or don't really create calm or care in our lives. I love that because yeah. it's like, you know, that's what I mean of really going into our beliefs. That's really doing it because we have been trained to think that everything, and we're in a disposable world. 
buy this and then get rid of that sofa next year because it, the design has to, and all this, everything is so disposable and all we're doing is killing our planet. So I love that. It, so question that belief. Why do you want that? How could you can organize without buying an organizing mm -hmm. tool? And so, you know, dig deeper into ourselves and what is important. And hopefully the planet would be one of those things. Yeah. One of the things that I find when I find myself surrounded with clutter, whether it be at, in my mind, <laughs> um, at, you know, where, where there's so much clutter, um, you know, in my office, at home, wherever, is what is the clutter distracting me from? Mm -hmm. Like, because if you've got that clutter in front of you, then it's distracting you from something else, whether it be a feeling, a goal you want to hit, just yeah. something external. So it's that external kind of like, it gives us that sense of, of uh, busyness when, and if we're feeling busy, then it allows us to, to, at least for me, it allows me to, to distract from maybe something that I need to, you know, take a deeper emotional dive into or maybe it's a problem I need to to resolve with a with a friend or a coworker, or um, you know, it's you know it's an, another excuse to not you know maybe hit a goal or something like that. So I find for me the the clutter um, is almost could be almost like Linus's security blanket from the Peanuts cartoon. Yes, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like, like what if. if what am I afraid of looking at, right? Yes, right. exactly, exactly. And one of the things I have to tell myself is if I keep this clutter here, kind of what you were talking about, Christina, is then then I, can't, I don't have space for new, bigger, better opportunities to come mm -hmm. in. And not necessarily in, in physical sense, but even in just manifesting, um, you know, like more abundance for myself, more wealth for myself, you know, creativity, clients for myself. Yeah, exactly. More creativity. Well, you can ask the question, you know, where else in my life is this going on? So when you look at clutter over in the corner and you go, okay, you know, what, what is that the physical, you know, the visual representation of something else? Yeah. And it's really, really interesting because you ask the question, so why am I holding on to this? What else, what, what else can I let, do I need to let go of that this is presenting it at, to, to me to, to deal with right now? And, and it is, it's, it's very freeing. I, they, they get very nervous when I go through the house and I start getting, getting going through stuff because it's like, yeah, it's got to go. What, what purpose does it serve? What are we doing with this? We had a, a, um, a little con thing I bought for my niece's baby shower four years ago for to dispensing juice. And we had a party we had something going on and it was leaking. I was like, okay, so this now serves no purpose. It's leaking. I have to mop my floor again, which was not my intention, not even my party. It was my son's party. So why am I dealing with this? And I put it off to the side and they were like, whenever we can see if we can fix it. For what? We don't even entertain. I bought this thing four years ago. And how often have we used it since? It serves no purpose. You know, so you start asking the question, you know, what what is this? representing or where else does this show up in other areas where you really do need to take take that step back and take a look at it oh, am i really, using this to distract myself right yeah mm -hmm. i i really like that thought that what else does this represent mm -hmm. you know that if if i'm doing this over here where else am i doing this mm -hmm. right that's an opportunity for insight yes yeah. 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 i mean that's, so, that's, i don't know if you ladies can relate about beating yourself up when you like aren't <laughs> addressing yeah. something, you know, I'm sure nobody else can, yeah. but it's real easy to beat myself up for the stack of paper that's on my desk versus, you know, the other stuff that's more internal that I need to look at. Um, it's much easier to say like, oh my God, I have this, this big pile of stuff that I need to work through. I'm just going to leave it there because it's still a distraction and it's an excuse and stuff like that versus taking it off. Now there's no distraction and it's like, oh, now I'm left with myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of, I think that's a lot of people's fears is being left alone with mm -hmm. themselves distraction free. I mean, that's why this, this country is so addiction ridden, um, you know, between alcohol, food, drugs, cigarettes, sex, shopping, work, you know, you name it, they, there's an addiction for it. Yeah. Ah. You know, what I hear you say, Michelle, and I, I can truly identify with this too, because as women, and I think Levon and someone else mentioned too, you know, 
we are actually caregivers, whether and I'm not referring to us being nurses, doctors, whatever, mm. but we are care, we take care of other people. And there are many times that we don't even have time to take, we don't make the time to take care of our own needs and our own, we, are, we put ourselves last as a woman. And so what I just hear in the conversation is the value and importance of us learning to love ourselves. And maybe this is the time that we can stop, reflect, and really get to know who we are and have an authentic, healthy love affair with us, with, with ourselves, mm -hmm. you know. And, just, and as one person mentioned, in, reflect inwards rather than outwards and really get to know who, because this is a great time for us to reinvent ourselves in many ways. Many ways, many, many, many ways. Is there anything <laughs> that that you have found has been taken away from you because of this current circumstance. You know, the, the fact we are restricted in our travels or we're restricted in where we can go or the things that we can do. So is there anything that's been taken away from you in this current situation that you are finding, I don't care, I don't miss it at all. I wouldn't have gotten rid of it on my own, but I don't miss it. <laughs> Go well, mine's not the thing or I realize it's, it's with um, food. I, if, if I, if there's food in the house, but we were, you know, everybody was going like, oh, yeah, I go crazy to get my shut everything down, and yeah, I go to the store. And we went, finally went into the store and everything was like ransacked, there was nothing there. And my husband was like, okay, so the reality is, is we have food here. If it, we're ready to, you know, really go down to the bare bones, we might not enjoy it, but there's food. And that became a big thing for me. I, I, I think, um, Liz, you had said that, you know, I realized how much I was out. And when I'm out, that means I'm probably picking up something on the way wherever I'm going. I can run through the drive through here, do that. And I, what I realized is, is now when I, I, when I think about eating food, I, I ask the question, so is it really worth it to try to get a door dashed or grub up? Like, really? Is, that, is it really that serious? Is it really that serious to leave home, to go out, to go get food, to come back home? Because I can't eat it there. So is it really that important? You know, it, 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 that's, that, that's been a big thing that I've, I've kind of let go of or realized that I don't need, I can really, really focus on, okay, so let's choose something that, that's actually better and that doesn't cost any extra money if it's not on a grocery list, then, you know, do I really need it? So that, that was, for me, what was a big thing for me. Wow. Can I add just one quick thing and just to add to that? If I feel I have to go to pick up something, and this is what, and I'm driving, and then I go either to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or, or Ross or whatever, and there's a line. I go, uh uh, I'm going <laughs> right home. <laughs> it's, I'm such an impatient person that I go, uh uh, I'm not joining a line. Uh -uh, I'm, I'm going, yeah. I don't need it. I'm going right. I convinced myself I never needed it, and I don't need it now. <laughs> 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 I've got, I had two. Um, one was the space between my husband and I. We've been together 17 years. Uh -huh. There was no, we were partners raising kids and we loved each other. But when there is no space between you because you live and work in the same space all day long, um, it forced us to figure out how to communicate better and remem remember like, wait, we actually have like our own relationship here all the time and not just around taking the kids to school, picking them up, doing dinner. You know, it was always those before school, after school, before work, after work activity times, and they're so busy. And so we just function in them. And now once we sort of had all that space, it was like, wow, we got to like carry on a longer conversation now and figure out like, how are you doing in the day? I'm seeing you all day now. Um, so it took away that space, which was a really beneficial thing for us to kind of revisit each other and reconnect. And, and just spend more time together that we weren't taking the time on our own to spend. And the other one I, I talked to someone about today was um, I am very A type personality. Uh, I, I have, I've always felt a very big sense of control and responsibility. Um, Liz, like you said, this need to care about all the things and all the people around me. And, and be there for people, even when it was very difficult for me to do that and I sacrificed for myself. But just that sense of, of wow, but I controlled that situation. And so this, I thought, was a really good reminder. I, there are things that I just don't have control over. And sometimes it's freeing to say there, you don't have control over everything and not everything is your responsibility. 
right. you can figure out how to adapt in this situation. Um, but it was actually it, a little frightening, but also very, it felt almost like a sense of relief, like, oh, remember, you don't control everything in your environment. And sometimes when you think, well, I have it all in me to succeed, right? Well, sometimes something like this comes along and tells you, no, sometimes you just have to adapt and do the best that you can, and you don't have control over all aspects of the situation. And so when you sort of live your life of like, but I can control everything around me, and then it'll all be, it'll all work right, and I'll get where I want to go, and everything will be smooth reminding myself that wow there are some big factors in life that you just sort of got to roll with um and so those were really good lessons both in in relief because they were sometimes painful to try to retain that control and but like being able to say wow this is a good reminder that we don't always have that ability to control the environment we can just control our reaction and how we respond in that situation mm -hmm. that's the gift of this virus that we don't need half of what we mm -hmm. think we do, and we have no control. And there's an old book, we never do, we tell ourselves these stories, we tell ourselves so many stories, but there's an old book that I thought that I've really been thinking about lately, and it's Pema Chodron, and it was, you know, it's probably over 20 years old, and it's called Comfortable with Uncertainty. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And I think that's such a great book for now because, uh, because we should always be comfortable with uncertainty because that's the world we live in, whether we acknowledge it or not. And this is reminding us of a lot about what the human condition truly is and not the stories we tell ourselves. Yeah, I think we, we live with the illusion of control. You know, if you, uh, I am a control freak. I am a professional at it and, uh, <laughs> when you when you finally realize, man, I had very little control over you know over anything, and um, the uh, you know the Serenity Prayer, you know if you guys know the Serenity yeah. Prayer, you know you yeah. know help me accept the things that that I I can't change, you know, and have the courage to change things I can, but for God's sake, have the wisdom to know the difference because. <laughs> mm -hmm beat yourself up over the things that you think you can control and you think you can change only to find out that you really, you have very, very, very little locus mm -hmm. of control over anything. And I think, you know, when stuff like this happens, man, it is so crystal clear that you, you really never did have the control. You just mm -hmm. thought, you know, that you did. Well, lady, well, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? On those decisions, no way. <laughs> so you think that you have, you yeah. think that you had control over the situation, and sometimes yeah. after the situation passes, you look back and you're like, "Oh yeah, no, I I just reacted in that situation. That's all. I just got carried along." Aren't we maybe really part of the gift of this time is to uh, ask? So I always say, live in the questions. Is ask yourself the question: How could I have learned this lesson more easily? You know, why do we have to be in shutdown virus mode for us to start looking at things and learning? You know, how can I do this more easily and how can I live like this all the time? Well, I think Christina said mindfulness. Was it you, Christina, that said that? You know, just the idea of living in mindfulness? Yeah, intention. with intention. Intention. And I also think there's a component of spirituality, however you want to take that. But it's, it's way, it's beyond us. It's some other higher power that rules your life and that helps you to be centered, that can contribute to that in reference to moving forward. When I hear the word control tour, I, I remember part of the issues that I and I others would imagine have issues around control is because we do have fear. Or fear, we have a lot. We're actually, it's motivated by fear and uncertainty. And we are living, this is a great time, as Donna says, it's a great time because we are in a time of uncertainty and fear. And how can we, uh, asking ourselves, how can we move forward without letting the catalyst be fear? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. fear is so under, it's underneath everything, isn't it? Everything. It's underneath, oh, oh God, you yeah. know, anger, it's, it's yeah. underneath control, it's underneath most of our emotions. And Absolutely. if you just keep digging down, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And it completely so wipes out gratitude. Like it's so right. hard to focus on the gratitude when you're yeah. afraid and you have that constant, it's almost a strive to keep going, keep going so that I can stay in control because you are driven by that fear and uncertainty. Yeah. In this time seeing, wow, okay, I can really pay attention to the gratitude now, or now's a good time to look at what we're grateful for because we did lose stuff or we did lose control or we did lose an idea um those it's or some income there's yes people are in total yeah. loss right now yeah yeah, yeah. remember fear is the opposite of love yes so take yes. that you know yeah. mm -hmm. use that to for your advantage yeah. what is it um oh i can't even think of it there's fear is a trigger oh, i can't even there's a phrase i can't think of it right now but I used to run a women's group that I think is like so perfect right now because the everything was um, everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if we lived like that all the time, we, we'd be so much happier. I think. Mm -hmm. That Canfield actually said, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Yes. That's yes. True. Well, I yes. Yeah. yeah. And also fear usually, uh, if there is a made up acronym that says uh, is false evidence appearing real. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. it is. It's all a fantasy. It's always been the future. Yeah. It has nothing real. It just um, consumes you with what might happen and you totally lose the moment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you guys, this has been a really wonderful conversation. And I, I knew that we had the right group of folks, you know, coming together to talk about this and um, any last words, anyone that hasn't, hasn't had a chance to speak up and say what's on your mind about what are you thinking of, of checking or ditching or adding to or, or what have you? Any final words from this, this esteemed team of wise women? <laughs> I really appreciated, oh, I don't, okay, it is working. Uh, I really appreciated, Christina, your comment because you nailed it. I think one of the things for me with um, the Marie Kondo approach is joy. But you, you nailed it when you said functionality. Mm -hmm. That really helped yeah, quite function. a bit. It's like, does this, is this still have a function? And yeah. kind of a take off on that. I know when I approach things, well, is this particular item, has it served its usefulness? I think, I um, you know, that was mentioned as well. It's like, has it served its usefulness? If it has, then I don't need it anymore. Even as simple things like on email, you know, but it's weird. Even with that mindset, sometimes it's, e it's easy to get caught into that, oh, I might need it. It's that proverbial, oh, I might need it. And getting <laughs> past that. There again is that, that fear. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's beautiful. Well, you guys, thank you for spending time in the ladies' room with me. Um, I, I hope that we take this mindset forward and, and maybe challenge all of our thinking, you know, not, not just in terms of the things around us, but the things that are going on inside of our head. Just continue to challenge the status quo. It's a great time, you know, to do that. And, uh, and share you know, share your insights with other people too. Give people permission to be learning during this time and, and give yourself permission to, to put the little tiny house that you were building up on top of the closet and say, I don't have to do that. So, but thanks again to all of you for joining us. And I, I thank everybody that joined us live here and, and all of those that will listen to the replay of this because this will live in perpetuity out on our website and out on YouTube so that we can share our wisdom with, with others forever. And uh, everyone just keep checking the Facebook page, check the calendars, look on LinkedIn and see everything we've got coming up because there's some really, really, really rich wisdom and conversation in in the, the minds and the, uh, the circle of women that we have around us. So thank you so much again. I hope you have a wonderful evening and I will see you all again soon in the ladies room. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye ladies. Bye. Bye.